Welcome, everyone. Um, good morning. Um, we'll just quickly pray and then we'll get started with the presentations. Father, we thank you. We come at this day, we come at this time into your mighty hands. We come at everyone who's going to present their sermons today, Lord. I pray it to be a blessing to each one of us. We thank you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Okay, we have five exciting speakers today. <laughs> Uh, those who are watching online, there's a lot of laughter here. So, anyway, we start with uh, Nina, and then uh, we will follow up with Prince, and then uh, Anand, Sri Radha, and Nikhil. Okay, so that's the order. So each one of them will, um, uh, uh, for want of time, each one of them will start uh, immediately. Right? Okay. Um, okay, you're ready, Nina. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Fine. Good morning, all. The simplicity, simplicity of the uh, ch uh, childlike faith. So we start with from Matthew 18, 1 to 5. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will not by no means means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. So, <laughs> children are a constant wonder. They are drawn to simple things with great awe and yet speak honest words that most adults don't have the courage to say. We often admitted children for their unique insight and captivating ways of describing simple things. But rarely do we include them in the adult conversations. The book of Matthew, Mark, and Luke all wrote accounts about the value Jesus placed on children in an unexpected moment. So when disciples asked Jesus, who is the most important people in his kingdom, it was that they were really want some affirmations of their own status. After all, they were the people who, with whom Jesus chose to spend the most time. But Jesus shocked them by gathering up one of the little child and presented the child as an ideal heavenly citizen. Now this child became the chosen and valued example for entering heaven. Becoming like a little child means that we maintain that wonderful and beautiful character char characteristics and qualities of children, which life in this sinful world tends to beat out of us. And what are these characteristics and qualities? They are the like tenderness of conscience, opens, openness about emotions and feelings, trust, dependence, easy to forgive and, and willing to learn and grow which we tend to strip out of us as we encounter the brokenness of this world. We do, th we do th things because they have always been done that way and we have trouble imagining anything different. But children do not behave in this way, nor did Jesus. Jesus lived in awe of life, of God and humanity. And this awe was contagious. People who saw how Jesus lived began to see how life should be lived. Jesus revealed how God intended life to be lived. In their, in, uh, lived. In their words, those who begin to live life like Jesus are those who begin to see heaven coming down to earth. This begin to see, uh, they begin to see the rule and reign of God unfolding in their own life with all its beauty, majesty, glory, and creativity. This is what Jesus himself lived, and this is what Jesus invited us to live also. And he taught us that if we want to experience God's life in this life, then we need to become like little children once again. So we'll see what are the other characteristics of little children. And uh, the, the most important thing uh, is a child capacity for excitement. And excitement is an appreciation gratitude and awareness of things as they are. We must think of the disciples of Jesus Christ as they couldn't get over the excitement of the good news. They were irresistible as they 
proclaimed that Jesus was God incarnate and he died on the cross and they were burst uh, the, and he burst the seal of the tomb that he lives forevermore and that he can change anyone's life who comes to him and the disciples were ready to sacrifice their lives for this truth but excitement of this good news we read in the new testament we certainly don't have it today so jesus is calling us again to go back to the thrill and excitement of a little child to the uh, to enter the kingdom of god and bring other people also to the kingdom another thing about the children is jesus meant that we were to have a childlike forgiving heart children cannot hold any grudge for very long it is true that they have their misunderstanding but they they are very short and they never allow their prejudices to interfere with their joy of living the little quarrels are soon patched up for they they can keep no um, enmity in their hearts in that sense we are all to be like ch children jesus says that jesus says that you cannot accept, accept to be con uh, converted and become like this this little children we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus thought that it was foolish to seek forgiveness of God while we refuse to grant forgiveness to others. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who for trespass against us. Jesus also means that we were to have to live a simplicity of the little child. How natural it is for a child to believe, except we become as little children in believing, we shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. But our intellectual culture has crippled our ability to believe in the simple yet profound truth of God. We are, we are drugged by materialism and numb by secularism so that we become hardened to a simple act of faith. But Jesus said we can be converted and become as little child and the childlike faith when we come to the cross of Christ with the knowledge that our sins are forgiven and we are new creation in Christ Jesus, which is it's 2 Corinthians 5.17. Jesus also meant that we were to come with the naturalness, natural mentality of child. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees who were pretending their religion with false humility and outside religiosity. The worst thing that could happen to a man is becoming contagiously religious so that he will not see the greatness of Christ and need of Christ in our lives. So Jesus said in Matthew 5.3, Blessed are poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who are um, natural and pure enough to believe in God and to take their hearts all and, and all of his greatest provisions which he made for us. Christ meant that we, we would become repentant heart like a child. We must be never seen, uh, we will not see the brokenness hearted repentance of a child uh, poured out for the wrong done a child has great capacity for repentance and and this we should be taken into our life that we should have a believing repenting humble natural and mind like a child so that can so that we can enter the kingdom of god apostle paul said that to both the cultural greeks and the pious jews the reality of christ on the cross sounded like the surest folly but paul said that wisdom of the world it in wisdom of the world it never found god and we are still groping blindly to seek him paul said the secret is found in the cross and we must approach the cross as a child and the real question is are we willing to humble ourselves today to receive christ as our savior with all the simplicity of a little child and we just pray the lord that father give us wisdom to do it according to your will, in Jesus' name. Um, okay, thank you, thank you, Nina. Thank you. Next is uh, Prince. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Um, so you switch on your check the mic. So switch on the camera, and then we'll start the timer. Yeah, you can push your chair out back a bit. I think. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll start the timer. The mic is uh, not mute. Um, is it muted? Yeah, it was off. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Say something. Check. Okay, yeah, got it. Okay, we'll start. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, 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 my uh, sermon topic was uh, staying hopeful. And I uh, just want to share uh, some of the uh, insights and some of the thoughts on how we can stay hopeful in the situations that we face through in our everyday life, which are so challenging. And uh, we know the story of Jericho walls, right? Uh, the walls of Jericho were 17 feet high and they were made with thick, pure, so, uh, solid stone. And it is very uh, hard and impossible situation for the young army Israelites. And God promised to give them the, pro uh, the land of Jericho, which is a main, uh, which is a main, uh, land which is a main thing for israelites to start to capture the promised land of cana and uh, god promised them that he will give the land of jericho but it doesn't mean they have they will escape the reality that they have to face the jericho world and i think it's how it is in most of our in most of our lives that we have the promises of god we have those dreams and visions that was backed up by the word of God and the promises of God, but it doesn't mean we'll escape through the realities of life. Like the Israelites have to face the Jericho wall before the promised land, we also go through the walls of life and these walls in our lives can be sickness, uh, divorce, addictions or uh, disappointments, discouragement. Many, uh, we can name them many more. And, uh, and when we face these uh, situations, it's very hard uh, to keep our faith strong, to keep and stay hopeful, believing that we'll see a miracle, that we'll see uh, answers for our prayers, that we'll see our situations changed. And the bigger the walls, the bigger the situations were, the bigger intimidating and uh, scary these situations may look like. And like Peter spent whole night catching fish, trying he will catch fish in the next try, but ended up catching nothing. Most of the times we do things. Uh, we keep on doing things, believing that God will do, believing that we'll see a breakthrough, believing that we'll see our prayers being answered, we'll see, uh, believing that our situations may change, but we won't see it in sometimes we won't uh, see the result and uh, we end up discouraged tired overwhelmed hopeless and some of that and sometimes we even bury our hopes thinking okay it's not for me like maybe it won't happen maybe it's not the will of god in my life but uh i think uh most of the times why we uh even though we know our God is a God who does impossible things, we know who God, our God, who is the one who turns water into wine, but why we still uh, end up losing hope is because uh, maybe we try to keep a period where there is a comma. Maybe we try to interpret things and situations on our own knowledge, on our own wisdom, instead of how what the God, word of god says about it 
what what the god looks the our situations at we know like joseph was betrayed by his own brothers and sold into a uh, slavery for egyptians but uh, in genesis chapter 45 when uh, joseph reveals himself to his brothers uh, he says that you sold me into egyptians but god has sent me he didn't uh, interpreted his life based on the event that was happened based on what people has done to him based on what happened but he uh, interpreted his life and his situation based on what god has done even though you have meant it for evil but god has turned it for good and even uh, in the say it is the same with uh, uh, israelites when they went to spy the land of cana all the 10 people they came and they speak so hopeless things they are like they look like giants and we are like grasshoppers before them but it's joshua and caleb who told they didn't deny the fact and the truth that the uh, army of canaanites are so powerful and strong they didn't deny it but they spoke the word of god that we will go we'll take the charge because god has promised that he will give us the land and uh, that's how when we see things through our own eyes that's when we get off of our hope that's when we get discouraged of our hope but when we start to see things through what god word of god says what the promise of god over our lives that's when we keep our hopes alive that's when we keep hoping and keep pressing forward without getting discouraged and getting tired and most of the times it's not and the question is not about do we have faith but the question is more like do we still have hope for what we are having faith for because in hebrews uh, 11 one uh, tells that faith is the evidence of things that we hoped for and we need to have a hope for our faith not to see like how we can keep on uh, how we can keep our faith if we are not hoping in the first place, we have to have a hope that we'll see the result. God will do what he has promised to do. And most of the times, even our hope may be in our own confidence, maybe in our own selves. And that's where our hope is so powerless because the hope where it is not in Jesus Christ is a powerless. And in Romans uh, chapter 5, verse 5 tells that, this hope will now will not disappoint us will not lead us to disappointment for we know how dearly god loves us and before the verse that tells endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation and the word greek word for salvation is sozo which means it is a wholeness we have everything that we needed in the salvation so uh, when we keep our hopes alive when we keep our hopes not based on our situations but on how god sees our situations what the god, word of god tells our situation that's when we can uh, keep our hopes alive that's when we even though we get discouraged even though we see failures when we look at when we look back towards what god has done before the word god word of god tells that even though enemy meant for evil god will turn it for our good god has prepared many good things for those who loves him when we keep our faith when we keep our trust in the lord and the word of god that's when we our faith won't be wavery and um, hebrews 10 23 says uh, let us hold tightly without wavering to our hope we are frame for god can be trusted to keep his promises and it is important to keep our faith to keep our hope firm so that we can see the promises it's like god will keep his promises and we have to trust it and how we can trust completely is staying hopeful and how we can stay hopeful in difficult times is looking what god says looking what the word of god says and looking how grateful and faithful he have been 
over everything and believing that the God who called us is faithful to complete every good work that he started in our lives. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Prince. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so um, next we have Anand Paul, Pastor Anand. Go for it. Yeah, um, sorry. Yeah, okay. You ready? Yeah, just check the audio. Check. Check, check. Yeah. Uh, just one minute, Pastor. Sure. Yes, Pastor. Okay. Yeah. Start of the time. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Anand. Uh, my title is Faith, and my topic is on truth about Christian faith. Hebrews uh, eleven six. It says that, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Uh, what is actually saying is, without faith, we cannot do anything. It's impossible uh, to please God. Uh, if you see, uh, faith is the major thing in the Christianity. Uh, we can tell like this also. Faith is the prerequisite in order to know God and to connect God. Uh, about the Christian faith, the truth is, uh, if you see in India, there are uh, 3 billion faith. Uh, uh, the Christian faith is different and the other 3 billion faiths are there. Uh, if you see in other faiths, uh, the important will be on the believers, which is uh, in Christianity, faith is not depend on subject of faith but on the object which is jesus let me tell you once again in christianity faith is not dependent on the subject of faith but on the object which is jesus while the others will be on the subject uh, i can proudly say that uh, christian faith uh, stands out if you see in peter and his books uh, faith is compared uh, as a precious faith it's a priceless so Christian faith is the most invaluable faith in the worlds of the faiths. So I just want to take you uh, today uh, through John chapter 2. Uh, if, we, if we think about John chapter 2, we'll mostly remember about the marriage and we can uh, listen to the sermons about the marriage. But I just want to take you in another perspective, which is from verse 23. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men and had no need that anyone should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. So if you see this verse, uh, uh, we, all, we all know that's the miracle which D Jesus did. And because of the miracle, there are so many people came to Jesus and, and believed him. But the main point, uh, if you see here in 23rd verse, then Jesus did not commit himself to the people. Why Jesus did not commit himself to the people? Because it says like he knows uh, uh, the intentions. If you see, according to uh, John 2, 23 to 24, all believers are not true believers. He know the intentions of the heart. So if you see here, uh, people who came to Jesus are just came because of the miracle what happened. And, and what I think is in our Christian life also, most of us, will be running after the miracles each and every time in our life. What I think is, I mean, there are certain times God says, no, uh, uh, we should believe on him and hang up on him in each and every time. The very saddest thing is in our Christianity, uh, we have changed the object of faith. I don't know about the urban churches in the regional churches and villages and all. People actually change the object of faith. The Today our faith was depending upon this oil bottles or kerchiefs or pastors. See, I mean, I'm not telling it's a wrong thing to do, but what happening is the object of faith is getting changed. So, but we it should not happen like that. Our faith had to change. Uh, our faith should not change. Uh, when we see in the prayer also, prayer has no power. But in the person to whom we are praying to is only have the power. I mean, prayer is the only channel to get the power from God. 
if really if if you really think like prayer is the most powerful thing if we if we see gentiles also they'll pray so good than us if you see now now it's uh, november i mean we they have their mala i mean they have this uh, meditation of 40 days if you see also they'll they'll climb the mountains uh, on their knees when we compared to their prayers and all nothing we are doing but what i'm telling is maybe for them there is a power in prayer for us but the person to whom we are praying there is power so uh, when we come to uh, the same uh, reference once again the reason why jesus did not commit to their faith is because their faith did not help them to commit to god when we see the scriptures in the whole bible faith is all about commitment so what kind of faith we are keeping on him is the matter so i just want to take you through three kinds of faith today uh, the first one is emotional faith and the second one is intellectual faith and the third one is volitional faith emotional faith is all about the emotions uh, the faith which we we get out of the emotions of because of some particular things and the second one is intellectual faith intellectual faith is uh, faith which is associated with a belief that may not necessarily lead to the practical changes but maybe it will give little faith maybe uh, the other thing is it won't last long the third one is volitional faith volitional faith is all about refers to a resolute and courageous act of will we are going to talk about the volitional faith now so what i tell is we all should have the volitional faith which is we have to know the god's will and we have to follow that volitional faith is all about doing everything for god god actually desires volitional faith from us as a christians we all have to introspect us what kind of faith we have are we doing the will of god in each and everything what we are doing in our lives actually we have a faith that has to be accepted by him i mean the other the, the other thing also when we come to the volitional faith we have to surrender our whole will to god when we when we see in matthew chapter 7 verse 21 also not everyone who says to me lord lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father in heaven whoever do the will of the father they can please god faith is like an anchor of the ship so we have to think ourselves uh, on which when your on your faith is on is it on is it on some miracles is it on um, some pastors is it an object faith is all about us and god we are believing god there is no need of uh, i mean i i'm not i'm not uh, denying the pastors and all but the thing is everyone have the same power god given if you have faith if you have belief uh, everything miracle everything will happen but the other thing is we can believe miracles but we have to believe jesus also miracles are the only channels to lead jesus who does miracles when we see uh, a bleeding woman when jesus uh, went to a bleeding woman when when he she got uh, uh, healed jesus uh, it's a very private thing for her but why is jesus actually calling her who is this who is this and all because why is jesus spoke with the lady because he don't want her to stop at the miracle itself that miracle should lead her to jesus faith is not anchored in the miracles faith is anchored in the character of jesus a god is a faithful god and failing faithfulness he have and the other thing is when the miracle happens it should not stop us there i mean it should not stop there only it should that miracle should lead to jesus and we have to uh, put faith on jesus we should not keep uh, keep our faith on men of god or men of god as a men of god and all uh, we are i mean future men of god we have to introspect ourselves and we have to teach and and we have to uh, think of ourselves what the commitment we have for christ and uh, when coming to the commitment it's all about submitting to lordship of christ we should come under come under god's control if we compare this democracy maybe people will think there is some freedom but when you come to the christocracy which is under the god's control we have so much freedom 2 corinthians 3 18 we should obey the god in each and every situation if you see uh, so many people david abraham they followed jesus and they they were so fruitful 
uh, I can, uh, and the other thing I want to uh, point out is uh, everyone making God, maybe Jesus, we are thinking maybe Jesus is my God. Uh, I don't have any other things, but in some other things, which is something lingering in our mind, uh, 24 hours other than Jesus, we are making it an idols. Uh, finally, the orchestrations of a person who are in faith, such a faith overcomes fear. And the second thing is such a faith overcomes worry and such a true faith is consistent overcomes fear if you see apostles acts for they prayed for the courage and they overcome the fear and the second thing such a faith overcomes the worry uh, which is psalms 55 22 says cast all your burdens upon me and the final thing is such a true faith is consistent thank you thank you man. so no altar call no? then <laughs> thank you Okay, uh, next we have Sri Radha. Yeah, Sri, Sri, Sri Radha, just check, uh, give her the mic, please. Um, check, check. Um, yeah, say something. Uh, can you check. just say? It's not coming on the last thing. I, oh. Check, check. Okay. Is it visible? Yes. No, no. It's Go ahead. I'll start. Yes, Pastor. Okay. I'll start, Pastor. Okay. So my title is uh, my sermon title is Little Things Matter to God, and. Um, topic is God is working behind the sin when we are telling ourselves we are unworthy. So I'll start with a story. So in a village, a woman used to leave and uh, that woman used to go to the river every day with her two vessels. One was broken and the other one was completely new. After two years, the broken vessel, which one is the broken vessel? He told its owner that why you don't throw me instead of carrying me? I'm completely broken. Then the woman took it on the way to the river and showed both the sides of the path. Paths were filled with beautiful flowers. And she said to that vessel, can you see the flowers? When I carry you, water falls from you. And from that water, these flowers come out. Uh, flowers came out. So never, uh, so never say that if I should throw you. Because you may feel broken the eyes of you, but see what God birthed from your brokenness. So we'll see some of the things from this story. Uh, first thing is never under, underestimate the silent periods or waiting season of your life. If we see uh, from Old Testament till New Testament, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, even though Jesus, everyone waited for the right time. Uh, everyone had that waiting period or silent period in their life. Um, second thing is, waiting period is not a wasting period. Sometimes we think that our waiting period is just like uh, uh, we are wasting. But uh, God is telling that it's not something that we are wasting. And um, if we see in uh, Psalms chapter 31, verse 15, that our time is in his hand. So it's not something that we are wasting. Third thing is never compare yourself to others. This is something that we do some mistake that we compare ourselves to others. Comparison is the enemy of contentment. It will always leave you feeling behind. It will never. Uh, it, it's like uh, you will feel that uh, you are never. You, you are not complete, or you are not uh, valuable. You are not uh, something like worthy. And uh, next thing we will see that God uses every single thing, even our, even our brokenness also. If we see that um, from. Okay, so um, sometimes uh, brokenness has two parts. One is always lead to the God and one is always lead to the world. So we have to choose that which path we are taking. Uh, one is brokenness is a blessing because it leads us to, towards the God because uh, God is telling that when we are broken, we are near to God. 
because in our brokenness we always see god's face so i want to share two verse one is matthew chapter 10 29 to 31 it's telling are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will but the very hairs of your head are all numbered do not fear therefore you are of more value value than many sparrows so there is no favoritism in god and uh, it's like um, we may see from our perspective but in god's pers perspective we are always valuable we are, we are always like worthy and john 13 7 god is telling that jesus answered and said to him what i'm doing you do not understand now but you will know after this so maybe we are here in in that waiting period or in silent period but there is a hope in jesus there is something like after every night there is a day so it was my sermon okay um thank you thank you Shirada. thanks okay last but not the least for today we have uh, mr nickel massey bringing us god's word <laughs> okay uh, so nickel massey check check okay you can switch on the camera yeah okay okay ready nickel oh, okay okay so good morning once again everyone praise the lord uh, today is my sermon topic is living life as a christian as we are believers as we are christian so how should we live and what we have what should we follow so we're gonna to see we're gonna to see this uh, some points about living as life as a christian as a believers as so uh, first thing is live in obedience so uh, for believers for like for christians obedience is the most important things it, it is very important when we believe in jesus christ why because uh, when we see first samuel 15 22 it says obedience is the more than is better than sacrifice if we are sacrificing anything if we are not obeying so that everything will be best so obedience is very important things for believers life as they live when we see abraham's life in every areas wherever god says and he did maybe he could have asked how i will do how it, it's possible but no he did whatever god says he obeyed he was faithful that's why called he's the father of faith so obedience is the most important thing in christian life when we see john 10 27 it says my sheep will listen my word my voice that is means telling about obeying when we see john 14 15 if you love me then you will follow my commandments in hindi it says if you will love me you will follow you will keep my commandments so that's why it says when we love so it will be good it's good to obey in every areas to obey lord so and second thing is live like a child of god when we see a believers life when we see they call to be a child of god god called them to become his child so first timothy 2 4 says god is calling us to be become his child to be his child and when we see john 1 12 it says if you will believe then you will get chance to become his child so when we believe in jesus christ as a savior so we'll get chance to become his children 1 john 3 1 2 it says god 
loves us he called us called us that's why he wants to save us so he loves us so live in like a child of god and when we see uh, third point live in authority so believers sh they should know because they also have authority in christ jesus as they are believers as they are follower of jesus christ christian they have authority so uh, let me share about little uh, when i accepted jesus christ so that time i used to think like uh, only pastor can preach i used to think like only prophet can prophesy i used to think like only uh, like uh, Uh, they can uh, like from where they are getting this power from where they are getting this all things but after when i started reading bible so after i get to learn believers also called jesus gave authority to everyone he says luke 10 19 he gives authority over all things matthew 28 18 he gave us authority to preach to teach the word of god and we see uh, i used to think like only uh, in church like only uh, big big pastor only they can teach they can preach only uh, other people they just have to listen but when we see matthew 28 18 he is giving us authority to teach and preach so that means every believers have authority to teach to preach the word of god and when we see look 91 authority over all sickness and demons so when we see uh, it's uh, uh, like uh, it's for believers like sometimes they think only uh, some pastor can pray they can lay hand and when they will pray they, they just believe like when they will pray that time and then i will get healing then i will uh, i will get healing and only they can demonstrate they can cast out demons So only they can do but when we see look 91 he's giving his authority over all things all sickness all so that means believers also can lay hand they can pray they also can cast out demons so they can also do everyone can do because they are child of god they have authority so they also can do when we see mark 16 17 to 18 if you will believe then this these signs will follow you to lay hands to lay hands and pray to cast out demons to all things if you will believe so that means uh, uh, whoever will believe that means anyone can believe jesus christ as a savior so these signs will follow them they can also do, do all these things they need to believe yes they have authority to do these things they have authority to overcome in this situation believers life should not be like uh, or uh, uh, every times just uh, uh, telling god complain complaining on god complaining on god like god why you, you doing this why you do this why you are having situation why in this things in this things all things but no they have authority to declare over all things they have authority to declare over situation declare over over all troubles in their lives they have authority and when we uh just uh, we'll see uh, three more points and one see god not to sin when we see amos 5:4 it says see god not to sin proverbs 19:23 it says fear god not to man because the fearing of god it will lead us in in the way of life so fear god not to men and when we see love god not the world when we see 1 john 2:15 to 7 it says do not love the world god says if you will love the worldly things if you will love the world then you will get cheat because uh, there is you will get cheat in every areas what if we will love to god because he loved us he loved us he gave his son because of love so he loved us so that's why it says do not love the world so uh, this is the points uh, i want to say so christian life 
they should know these things like only some of the points i have so they should know the things like what they have what they should follow what they have things how they should live they all things they should know so this is very important things so okay god bless you thank you thank you nikhil thank you okay so um we have four more minutes left so so what we'll do is we'll stop here huh yeah remarks okay we can probably uh, can share some uh, let me see if i remember i'll just look at the hmm. okay okay nina's left um so friends um huh yeah that's what i i just uh, yeah so yeah uh one thing that i felt um is uh, the personal application bit what can you do okay so to uh, to really emphasize that i think i felt that everyone needs to really be strong in that area uh, because that's what you're leaving behind so to say that okay this is something that you heard but this is something that you can this is what you can do with it so um yeah so it was good um then anand um yeah anand uh, very interesting topic and very interesting way that you shared and um again the personal application so so prince coming back to prince prince is yours is a message of hope right so um so again this yeah staying hopeful so the personal application bit is very important like you know so which means that okay this is what i can take home so to really summarize with that correct correct yeah so so when you summarize it okay here are three things that you can do and also to um, like when you actually bring the thing out in real life examples okay it can be from your own life uh, it, so that will really uh, put things in perspective and uh, yeah i mean whatever you did but um, to give some more details will be fine yeah so yeah so uh, anand also same thing personal application i think you you shared a lot of stories to illustrate the points and, but personal application of um, you know uh, of our faith i think that that came through but you can actually summarize it uh sri radha uh, sri radha what i felt was you could you could actually have spoken a little more you had some more time you finished in some uh, yeah no no she had about uh, i think four and a half minutes or something left according to my clock so um, that was the thing um and uh, yeah and the scriptures you see you were using a powerpoint so put the scriptures there right you uh, you you're using the powerpoint for the points for your but then the scriptures can also be put there you had a lot of um you know good scriptures to share you can put that over there as well um yeah and also time you know you i think you were probably under pressure you wanted to finish it fast uh you didn't want to be you know left without time but then you can uh, the best thing is to make best use of time you know not to rush through but take your time and uh, do it and also brokenness you can actually share uh, a little more what does it mean really you know you can uh, give it some more depth so so i can see i might be broken uh, in a way but i don't really know it right uh, like to my mind i'm just thinking brokenness maybe maybe lack of self worth lack of self esteem um maybe going through a i don't know difficult time you know and it, uh so if you bring out what is really brokenness you know we we have this idea okay something that is not right but what aspect of it is not right you know if you point out then um, then i'm able to really receive that healing and all this and and uh, for a typical message like this you need to go into ministry time uh, of course not for you know our presentation but really you can actually invite the presence of god to you know all these areas of brokenness that that can be healing yeah nikhil masi nikhil uh, good nikhil uh, um, and uh, uh, you also had some good points about christian living 
uh, you know, basically on identity, authority, etc. Uh, wind it up with that, you know. Uh, probably you, were, you thought you were running out of time, but you had, you know, one more minute. So to wind up uh, would really help, right? Okay. Thank you, everyone. So next uh, class, we would have Samuel Madhu and uh, I think Anthony. Yeah, so these are two folks and uh, maybe whoever, Prabhu also, Prabhu, yes, Prabhu, Prabhu, Samuel, Madhu, Anthony, uh, three, and anyone else who is not presented can do that, right? Thank you so much. God bless you. Bye-bye.